hate most is Peters is when somebody who doesn't go to football says, what are you getting worked up for? It's only a game. It isn't only a game. Don't ever tell me it's only a game. It's not only a game. There's some different things are important to different people. Football happens to be important to me and a lot of other people. The numbers are huge. More than 20 million people are inspired each year by football in this country. It's the most international experience there is. Forget art, literature, music. It moves more people more powerfully than any other group experience. And if you've ever supported anyone, you'll understand. You see your team struggle on the pitch. You want, you want, you desperately want them to do well. You, you feel for them, and I think that a lot of, a lot of the sports you saw there today were um, had, had the sort of nervous knot in their stomachs, and they were wishing the team on. The way they perform on the pitch does affect the, affect our, our way of life. It certainly does. When Jeff Vickers isn't being a bank manager, he's the club secretary of Middlesbrough Supporters South, the MSS, a man with an obsession. Each Saturday, he and the club members gather not in a pub, but at King's Cross Station to start their journey to watch their beloved borough. But for them, a home match involves a 16-hour day and a round trip of almost 500 miles. For him, the love affair began as a schoolboy, a crush passed on by his father. And it's a relationship that's evolved over a quarter of a century. It's a passion shared by club travel secretary Simon Chapman. I'm a travel secretary, so basically run the, uh, the train trips. Um, I've got to, you know, play years with British Rail and get the tickets up and dish them out, and preferably not making the, the mess of it that I had this morning. Um, I really enjoy it. Normally, I'd be at work and nobody would ring. You know, I never get, I never get any phone calls. And now people ring me up all the time and talk about the bottom. It's great. Suits me down on the ground. That mess involved overbooking, and the result is unaccustomed football supporter luxury, first class to Darlington. But that still leaves the odd problem. Supporting a football club confers a sense of identity and belonging, and going to a match with a group certainly helps sustain that. Nice to travel with people, especially if you don't care, you know. They're all like Germans and supporters. Don't be doing around the south coast of England, you know. I live near Melanstead. Very nice area, really, I suppose. Yeah, different environment, isn't it? You know, with all the. You've got no stay awakes and shipyards looking out at you, you know. Mind you, we have none of them up there to look out on now. <laughs> For most people, the idea of following Manchester United or Liverpool around the country is just about understandable. But Middlesbrough, when you live in London, strains credulity. And the ground, Ayrson Park, certainly isn't a beacon of glamour. No Wembley or Highbury here. Built in 1903, nearly 30 years after the club's formation, it's a good old-fashioned ground without a cantilevered stand in sight. But for the fans, it's a powerful reminder of the home they miss. I want to go back home. I, I, you know, I miss my home and my friends so much. Yeah. These, are, these are like friends to me now, these people. I've been with, been with them for three years now, and uh, hey, wherever can I go with them, you know? The time when I was on the dole, it was a really good, a really big thing, because you know, it was pretty desperate when you're on the, on the dole and taste that, because there's, there's no work, or no work I could do anywhere. And, um, the only thing I had to look forward to was going to match every 10 days or something. Economic necessity may have driven many away, but where you live doesn't affect who you support. People rarely choose a club. For most, it's an emotional tie, an accident of birth. To be honest, it is, it is in the blood. I mean, it's, it's like a, almost like a religion. I mean, I, I um, like a couple of weeks Saturdays ago, we had a blank Saturday because of the internationals, and um, I didn't know what to do with myself. And I was pacing up and down at home and, and, um, and, and getting... And getting, I didn't. I just just felt uh, just felt totally bored. I mean, on days like this, when you get the adrenaline going, it's going now. Actually, it's only what ten past ten past ten. That sense of anticipation and excitement, for most of the MSS at least, comes from watching, not playing football. Few profess to be even at best proficient. George Johnston is the exception to the rule. I was good enough, but never quite made it. <laughs> that was it. Played with the juniors in that, you know. Had a few trials here, there and everywhere, you know, but it was cutthroat at the time. There was a lot of competition. I actually kept the middles of boys. For most of us, the love affair we have as a child with football, devoted, unquestioning, changes as we grow older and build up other relationships.
No, not at the moment. So does that make football a substitute for sex? <laughs> not the way this lad play. <laughs> I've seen that one, the cliff hat trick. Anyway, I've thought about this. I mean, how long am I... It's like, my ambition at the moment is, from a fan's point of view, it's just to, it's just to be able to... I, I, want to, I want one season where I, I can say, well, there's at least one season where I managed to get to every game. Um, and I figure I've only got... I've, I figure I've probably only got so many goals at that before responsibility and all that sort of stuff encroaches. And uh, I have to give, the, give that up, but... At the moment, uh, I, uh, I don't see any reason why I should. For one fan, as they near home, there's no geographical umbilical cord. Born and bred in Surrey, and stayed been in Surrey all my life. About 42 years ago, I think, something like that, an uncle of mine thought I was going to be a reasonable footballer, took me up to Stanford Bridge. And, um, and that was, as I say, that's when I... That was Chelsea, obviously Chelsea Middlesbrough. Uh, Wolf Annual was playing, <coughs> and I can't remember any others in the team, but he sort of stood out in my mind, you know. And uh, I've followed him quite closely ever since. I just love watching him play. Wilf Mannion, Borough's most capped and revered player. He was the kind of individual to inspire generations of children to love the game. Another inspiration, this time from the late 50s, was Brian Clough a barnstorming centre-forward whose goal-scoring record leaves Gary Lineker for dead. Middlesbrough's greatest moments, though, tend to be remembered through individuals, as the team, like others from the North East, has underachieved. Here we are, back at the border. Their highest position in the first division, third, was as long ago as 1914, and they have never been beyond the sixth round of the FA Cup. The Borough have only ever won three things. The Amateur Cup back in the last century, the Second Division Championship, and most recently in 1976, the Anglo-Scottish Cup. But victory there, strangely against Fulham, was hardly the stuff of dreams. But on this Saturday, it doesn't deter the fans. Over 18,000 were heading through town, looking forward to a trouble-free match. Fortunately, we don't um, encounter many problems at Ayrson Park. Uh, the stadium is well organised, uh, the crowd are well behaved and generally it's a good atmosphere. The London uh, area Middlesbrough fans are tremendous uh, and they give the club very good support when they're in the London area. I know that for certain because my son's one of them. The Hillingham problem is, is nowhere near as bad as it used to be five, six seasons ago. I have seen no trouble whatsoever at the grounds this season. Um, there's, a new, there's a new feeling about football these days, and it's been brought on by the fanzines, I have to say. A new realism, better policing of football grounds, I have to say. Uh, certainly no problems I've seen this season. I've been to many matches. Once in Middlesbrough, it's time for the traditional pre-match entertainment and a chance to catch up with old friends and discuss vital borough issues. Was it Souness or Hickton who scored the third goal against Portsmouth on January the 19th, 1974? It's the sort of thing the real fans know, not out of one-upmanship, but out of a real abiding interest. But not all memories are so trivial. In the 70s, all our problems were financial. Um, but now, I think that um, the, the, since, since the, the liquidation and the new board took over in 86, and ICI came in and Colin Henderson was put in as chairman, um, there's a different feeling about it. Um, and yes, they do want to know about us. Um, you know, they, they bend over backwards to get players down to our club. They give us tickets for matches. Um, we don't take advantage of that, by the way, but um, you know, they, they look after us because they know that we, we spend an awful lot of money coming and travelling and watching this club. I think it's wrong to keep them in the dark and I think it's wrong um, you know, to treat them like second-class citizens. You know, we made a mistake here with the ticket prices. We've put that right quickly, and and hopefully they should be cultivated. The fans, you know, and they've responded very well. And you know, hopefully it can be an ongoing, satisfactory relationship. Right. Here we go. Bonnie lads. I mean, the away support's been marvellous, really. We've had a bit of a sticky spell, you know, the last five or six games, but uh, the away support of both Forest and Tottenham was terrific. And you'll see 19, 20,000 here again today. And, uh, yeah, they, they're good. They haven't barracked us and they've got behind the team very well. And they're good supporters. They're passionate. You see, football means more to more people up here. I think it does. It's, it's a bigger part in their lives. It's a community thing. The passion is traditionally centred on the Holgate end, but this terrace is under threat from the Taylor Report. 
let me say that I'll be fighting as hard as they would want me to to ensure that they can remain standing for as long as possible. The behaviour is absolutely perfect. Um, I'm, I, I, I firmly believe that you are safe on your feet as you are on your bum and that um, as far as the whole gate is concerned it will be left until we're absolutely dragged screaming to put the seats in. Those areas are referred to as the cop, it's the heart of the um, support. Um, we can get eight or nine thousand people in there. It's a good mix of, of typical supporters. It's, it's our bread and butter and it's tremendous. For this match, the MSS have split up. One group, led by Jeff, is in the Holgate. A second, less traditionally perhaps, are in the East End stand behind the other goal. It's been a long journey, but as the match begins, they hope the club really does appreciate the efforts that they've made. They must be impressed by the dedication of all these, these guys here. I mean, travelling up and down in a day to watch a 90-minute football game, to some people, would seem madness. Terrible, I go home, I'm terrible. Um, I, uh, I, 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 I'm depressed almost in games that are very important if we lose games. I, I, I'm, I'm not easy to live with. You've just travelled more than 200 miles. Your team are playing badly and you've gone one down at home. You could be shopping, gardening, anything. Disillusion setting in and spreading around the crowd. You face a return trip of unending gloom and misery. You can feel that internal agony and pain building up. That's when the real fan gets stuck in. the end of the match and for the vast majority of the home crowd thoughts start to turn towards a quick jog home some tea and maybe watching blind date but for the Middlesbrough supporters south it's more a question of can we even stay for the end of the game or shall we miss the train home <laughs> We should make it, we should make it, Jamie. Right, Slavin, come on! Go on, 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 But as the race to catch the train begins, how important are the fans to the players? The right sort of encouragement and vocal support, you know, uh, certainly they're, they're going to help us. It's, it's great for your confidence, but you, you certainly can't, uh, can't read that much into it. The majority of us, you know, have, have, have been here for quite some time. Um, you know, I, I left school and came here immediately at, at 16. And uh, I'm, as you can tell by my accent, I'm near enough a northeaster now. Uh, many people think I'm from here. Um, where I may as well be, but I, I really do enjoy enjoy what I'm doing here and, and hopefully the fans do as well. For the MSS, the journey back is just beginning. A couple of members have been lost in the rush to catch the 518 to Darlington, and they'll have to make their own way home later. For the others, it's the chance to sit down and argue about the match. 
Enjoyment might not be the right word to describe how an obsessive feels at the end of the match. For him, it's a release, a relief, a chance to unknot those clenched stomach muscles. We didn't lose. I can relax. But then those thoughts come flooding in. If only, perhaps, that, that chance we missed, if only, the referee, that offside decision. and there's a 50-minute wait for the London train. Football's all about tradition, the pub before the game, the game itself, the ritual stop at the chippy, followed by a pint afterwards. The overriding impression of the day is masculinity, a close affinity easily achieved. It seems to exclude all but the most zealous women. By the way, you know, enjoy your day and all that. She knows I love it. <laughs> it's great. You know, it's really good. Yeah, she's behind me. The London train pulls in. King's Cross is only three hours away. But has it all been worth it? Every day watching Middlesbrough is a good day, actually, I think. Um, it, was, um, it was a disappointing result because uh, a draw is two points lost, isn't it? But um, given the side that we had out today, we had um, four or five um, players missing who would have definitely got been in the side. Um, I think a point was probably uh, a point one. While Jeff's reasonably content, some of the team feel that the home support wasn't all that it could or should have been. I just like to go at the ground and have a more, I suppose. But uh, I don't agree with it. I was, I was trying to get them going round me, and my brothers were as well. We say now I've come 250, 300 miles to watch this. I said, get behind your team, you know. And that's what everybody should do, as it's part, it's part of the community. And they should get behind it. It was worth. I mean, people, people don't, people, like I said, people who don't go would think I was insane. But to me, it was worth the cost of the train ticket, the cost of the match ticket, getting up at half past six and not getting home till half past eleven to see Tommy Wright turn on the ball and cross that for ball. With just that little moment where Tommy Wright turned and the corner flag. That was worth the entire day's, entire day's trouble for me. I mean, it makes a difference to my week what the result is on a Saturday. I mean, after we, we failed in the playoffs last season before last, season before last. And I, and I was just sick. I felt sick, I felt cheated, I felt robbed. It affects you like that. I think you meant to quote Bill Shankly now, aren't you? I'm not quoting Bill Shankly. I think Hills would put that one in perspective. Like, all right, in the broad scheme of things, well, all of us are fairly intelligent. All of us, we all know that, you know, it doesn't matter, and, you know. Getting rid of a part like in South Africa or whatever is more important. But it doesn't feel more important to me. I don't go to movies anymore. I don't go to rock concerts very often. But what I do is I go to football. Yeah. 
Hugh McElmoy, remember him? Called the uh, 70s centre forward. Certainly don't begrudge any of this. Um, you, you know, today's just just us one day watching the football. Monday, Tuesday, I'll get through the post applications to join the, the supporters club. Um, we got a, a, a large advert in the fanzine today, Fly Into the Moon, who pr uh, printed out um, a whole page for us. Uh, we'll get probably a dozen applica applications or people who are interested in joining the supporters club. I've got to answer those. I've got to organise a trip for, for Norwich with um, Simon, the travel secretary, next uh, Saturday. Uh, so we'll be having 20 or 30 people at least travelling with, with us then, uh, maybe more. Let's face it, um, I do this for enjoyment, nothing else. And uh, it, it, it's, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not it's not a burden, it's, it's an enjoyment, I enjoy it. I've, I've, do, I've done this, this job as secretary of the sports club now since 86, that's six years, seven years. And um, I don't feel like giving it up really, because I enjoy it. It's been a 467 mile round trip from King's Cross to Middlesbrough by train and most of them face at least another hour before they'll get home. Borough didn't win and the game wasn't great but next week the adrenaline will be flowing, the stomach muscles clenched and they'll be on their way to Norwich. And as Jeff says, they wouldn't have it any other way.